Hey everyone, my name is Wedge, Ixalan pre-release is coming up fast and we're back to continue our preview coverage talking about the rest of the cards in the set and not spoiled individually. We've already covered white and blue, so if you want to see those videos you can click the links on the screen. Now, let's talk about some black cards, hope you enjoy. Anointed Deacon is 5 mana for a 3-3 three, three Vampire Cleric. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may have target Vampire get plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. At worst, this is a 5-3 on attack on your turn if you have no other Vampires to pump up. Could be worse. I'm not writing home about this Deacon by any means, but it could easily function as a top end filler creature and gain some value if you have a non-zero amount of Vampires, especially if those Vampires have lifelink and not a bad card overall. Blake Keeper is one black mana for a 1 1 bat imp with flying. You can pay 8 mana, tap it, and sacrifice it, and target opponent loses 4 life and you gain 4 life. I mean, this is an 8 point life swing, but Heavens to Betsy is an expensive one. I don't like 1 1 flyers for one at all, and even if you manage to grab this late game, 8 mana? You would need to find the late, late, late game for this to be even remotely relevant, and by then, the game may already have been decided for you. I'm just not sure there's justification for this specific 8 mana ability. I'd much rather draw 3 cards and a 0-3 seems better throughout the game than a 1-1 flyer. Not super impressed with this one. Contract Killing is 3 of anything and 2 black for a sorcery. Destroy target creature. Create 2 treasure tokens. Hot dog, this is my kind of removal spell. I don't even care about sorcery speed. You get to ramp and color fix twice in addition to destroying a creature. Contract Killing is a great limited card, no doubt about that. This is a common that you'll probably end up picking up early in draft, or if you have it in sealed, it will help make black look more attractive to you. Can't argue with the effectiveness of removal, and this one gives you so much more for the cost. Love of the design, I'm a big fan. Costly Plunder is 2 mana for an instant. As an additional cost to cast it, sacrifice an artifact or creature, draw 2 cards. Whoa, wait a second, this is just strictly better than Altar's Reap. Instead of having to sacrifice a creature, you can sacrifice a treasure token or any other piece of artifact garbage you don't want anymore. Just straight up more flexible than Altar's Reap, which makes it better. Same cost, same exact wording, just with more options. Which means that outside of Limited, we have to talk about Commander for a second because the Plunder replaces the Reap in a myriad of strategies in that form Format, or at least gets added to decks that also run the Reap. I'm talking most anything sacrifice based or recursion based, so Marin, Alicia, Mazarek, some pro strategies. Didn't expect to find a strictly better Altars Reap in the set, that's for sure. Costly Plunder is good stuff, and if you have an abundance of treasure, even better than Altars Reap and Limited. Nice. Dark Nourishment is 5 mana for an instant. It deals 3 damage to target creature. A player, you gain 3 life? Well, hello there, instant speed color shifted lightning helix. I expected a card like this to create life loss, not damage. The difference is largely irrelevant, but flavor-wise, that's what I was expecting. Anyways, this is top tier removal in Ixalan, limited without a doubt. It is expensive, but it's instant speed and straightforward. 3 damage is going to kill a lot in this set, as 3 toughness seems to be a bit of a benchmark. Dark Nourishment should be prioritized highly when drafting, and if you open it in your sealed pool, it should nudge you a bit into black for sure. Dire Fleet Hoarder is 2 mana for a 2 when human pirate, and when it dies, create a treasure token. So this guy just vomits treasure when he dies? I'll take it. I'm not usually a big fan of 2 ones for 2, but when this runs into something that can kill it, basically a tissue box, you do get some ramp out of the deal. Provides some nice pressure early and helps you build into your late game. Not a bad card. It'll be an alright filler creature for aggressive pirate decks, or just any black-based aggro strategy in this limited format. Dire Fleet Interloper is 4 mana for a 2-2 human pirate with menace. When it enters the battlefield, it explores. The Interloper is the epitome of filler creature. Menace gives it a lot of value, and without it, the card would probably be a dud. It comes with Explorer, so you either get a free land to your hand, or it becomes a 3-3 with menace. Both solid options. Again, it's a nice filler creature. I'm not running door-to-door -door freaking out about the card, but it's decently playable. Fathom Fleet Cutthroat is 4 mana for a 3-3 human pirate. When it enters the battlefield, destroy a target creature and opponent controls that was dealt damage this turn. The Cutthroat requires combat on your opponent's part for the trigger to be useful, but in a limited format like the one we're about to go into, I don't see that being a huge problem. Worst case scenario, you forego the trigger and it's still a 3-3 warm body. Of course you want to be able to use this removal, but if you can't, that's okay. Even if you only get to utilize the trigger 50% of the time, the Cutthroat is worth inclusion in most black decks, especially a aggressive ones that prioritize combat. Grim Captain's Call is 3 mana for a sorcery. Return a pirate card from your graveyard to your hand, then do the same for Vampire, Dinosaur, and Merfolk. 
Well, isn't this card just super weird? With the way the set's shaping up, chances are you'll probably have a deck with two of these creature types in it, maybe three. Remember that each creature type spans multiple colors. If you're running black, you already have access to pirates and vampires. Which means a simple splash into green gets you both dinosaurs and merfolk. Don't go out of your way to build around this card, but it isn't unheard of that you could use this to recall three cards. In a black green deck or Grixis strategy, you can hit all creature types easily. I kind of want to do this now. It reminds me of an Xbox achievement. Heartless Pillage is three mana for a sorcery with a raid. Target opponent discards two cards. If you attack with a creature this turn, create a treasure token. Okay, before we talk playability, is there a type of pillage that isn't heartless? I thought being heartless was implied in a pillage. Are there pirates running around hugging people while they pillage? Because that's disturbing. Anyways, mine are out with raid. I probably won't play this too often because it isn't my style, but if you're playing a super aggressive black base strategy, this is a neat top end to run your opponent out of gas, and if you can enable raid, you get some nice ramp and fixing out of the deal. It's decent, but mostly in super aggressive decks. March of the Drowned is one black mana for a sorcery, choose one, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand, or return two target pirate cards from your graveyard to your hand, uh, yes, I love this card. This is a pirate version of Ghoul Caller's Chant, and I loved that card too. This sorcery drips with value, it may not seem like much, but in a pirate deck, the value is there, one black mana on a single card to bring back two dangerous pirates, especially an aggressive deck, that's huge for you. In an archetype where you need as much gas as possible, March of the Drowned not only gives you gas, but it's in the form of guaranteed value. You know you're getting your pirates back. I love March of the Drowned. If you're drafting pirates or you opened a lot of pirates and you have it, play it every time without a doubt. Queen's Agent is 6 mana for a 3-3 vampire scout with life link. When it enters the battlefield, it explores. Queen's Agent is real expensive, it's true, but life link is a good addition to the card. Even if you explore and reveal a land card, at least it comes with a decently sized body and a mechanic that matters. 6 mana is still a lot, so I probably wouldn't put this into just any deck, but if you're looking for a top end of a black deck that can utilize that life gain, or just needs some power at high cost, Queen's Agent is okay. Another explorer creature I would want to reveal a non-land with, a 4-4 with lifelink is simply way more dangerous than a 3-3 with lifelink, especially in this format. Raider's Wake is 4 mana for an enchantment with raid. Whenever an opponent discards a card, the player loses 2 life at the beginning of your end step. If you attack with a creature this turn, target opponent discards a card. This series is mostly about limited, but I don't particularly enjoy cards like this in limited. At best, you're paying 4 mana the turn it comes down to force a discard and shock your opponent, but that's 4 mana at sorcery speed, and I'm just not sure that's good enough. Now, if we're talking constructed, where you can build a deck suited to take advantage of discard slash pox shenanigans, this might not be so bad. Building a deck with a lot of discard seems pretty cool considering the wake shocks your opponent into oblivion each time they discard a card. It's an interesting card, but definitely not for limited. Seeker Squire is 2 mana for a 1-2 human scout. When it enters the battlefield, it explores. Yeah, I'll play this. I'm not going to go crazy over it. It's not like I'm a 13-year-old girl and this is a Jonas brother, but it's playable. When you explore, if you reveal a land, that is you drawing a card, but you're left with a 1-2 that can't kill much besides pirates. Regardless, Explorer is powerful on a 2-mana creature, and getting a 2-3 more than half the time, considering your non-land-land -land ratios, of course, it seems decent. Plus, many of us fall into the trap of not including enough early drops in our decks. The Squire is a good reminder of that. Skull Duggery, great name, is one black mana for an instant. Until end of turn, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one, and target creature an opponent controls gets minus one, minus one. This card is real good. I'm not usually a fan of tricks this tiny, but for a single black mana, it's hard to say no. A two power and toughness swing in combat can mean everything, especially when so much of Ixalan is focused around fighting on the ground. It also helps that there are a bunch of one toughness creatures in the set, but even beyond that, it's a single black mana, and it does more than you might think. When you're making your decks and you're looking at your spell slots, after you put in all your removal, Skull Duggery is worth trying out. It's just cheap enough and just impactful enough to be playable. I like it quite a lot, to be honest. Sky March Blood Letters, 3 mana for a 2-2 vampire soldier with flying. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent loses one life and you gain one life. This is sweet! It has everything I want and at a fair cost. 2 point life, swing, evasive keyword, cheap cost, Sky March Blood Letter is going to make 100% of all black decks I make in this limited format. It isn't flashy and doesn't scream, play me, but trust me, this is well worth inclusion. A 2-2 two -two flyer for a fair cost and a 2 point life swing is the definition of a competent common. 
Spreading Rot is five mana for a sorcery. Destroy target land, its controller loses two life. Hello, land destruction, my old friend. Like most land destruction spells in Limited, you're not going to want to play this. Five mana sorcery speed is clunky as all heck, and shocking your opponent isn't nearly enough additional value to make this thing worth it. It doesn't get you ahead on board, and if your opponent isn't starved on lands, it's going to be a five mana brick more often than not. If this were three mana, it'd be a different story, but at that cost, you are always better off playing another creature or more directly impactful spell, please don't play this. Vanquish the Weak is 3 mana for an instant. Destroy a target creature with power 3 or less. Man, first we're calling the weak, then we're hunting the weak. The weak really need to get their crap together. They're not good at surviving. I suppose there's a lesson in there. Survival of the Fittest was printed a long, long time ago. Anyways, Vanquish the Weak is an instant speed removal spell, and this is a limited format in Magic the Gathering we're talking about, so obviously I'm going to tell you that this is playable. Hits almost every pirate in the entire set, most merfolk, most vampires. It's more versatile and wide-reaching than you think. Well worth including in any black limited strategy. Certainly one of the first cards that make the main deck. Vicious Conquistador is one black mana for a 1-2 vampire soldier. Whenever it attacks, each opponent loses one life. This is just a better pulse tracker, and I played that card in World Awake Limited, so I'm going to tell you the same thing I thought then. Worth playing. You drop this on turn 1, it's coming in hot for 2 damage on turn 2. One of that unblockable. I'm not saying that the Conquistador is going to change the format forever, but I usually shy away from playing 1 mana cost creatures when I can. They tend to be underpowered. But in an aggressive black deck in Limited, I think this has a place certainly. It's more annoying than anything else, poking at your opponent throughout the game, attacking whenever you have the opportunity, dealing damage they can't stop. I like it quite a lot, if for no other reason than it's annoying as all sin. And that's going to do it for the rest of the black cards in Ixalan. This limited format is shaping up to be a battle on the ground, and the black cards bring a lot to the table. They're solid removal, as expected, but also ruthlessly aggressive attackers and cheap recursion effects to bring them back, and combat tricks to help them win in battle. I gotta say, black impresses me. It's pretty well-rounded as a color and clearly able to be relied upon and built around. What do you think about black in the set? How do you think it stacks up against white and blue? I'd love to hear what you have to say, so be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments and we'll talk about it. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. Mixalon pre-release is next weekend, which means that the release is the weekend after that, which means that we're less than two weeks away from getting our hands on the set. If you haven't pre-ordered your boxes yet and you still want to get in on that, you can right now for $90 a box. If you don't have a local game store or yours charges too much, I got you back right here. Just click the link on the screen. Helps the channel. We all win. Enjoy.